multi-level loops in Java. I want to take you through a scenario here of using multi-level loops uh, to traverse a grid. And basically, for right now, the grid's going to represent an array. So if we just actually looked up here in our upper left-hand corner here, this is basically what we're going to be doing. And uh, down the road, we're going to replace those X's with actual data, with actual numbers, letters, characters, whatever on that. So that's our goal is to traverse this grid and actually make that grid. So let's step you through the program here. I've got a couple of variables to, uh, defined. So I've got a variable here that's going to represent a column counter and then a column stop. So this is the number of columns, a row counter and a row stop. So this represents the number of rows. Okay, and basically we're doing a multi-level while statement. Can you use for statements? Sure you can. Both will work just fine. So we're going to let the outside loop represent the rows and we're going to let the inside loop represent the columns. So let's step through the code here. Row counter has been initialized to 0. Is 0 less than 5? Yes it is. So that means we can enter the loop. Column counter. Column counter is at 0. Our column stop is at 5. So that's true. So we can enter the loop. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to do a print x. So it's going to go ahead and print an x. We're going to increment the counter. So now our column counter is now 1. Is 1 less than 5? Yes, it is. We print another x. Okay, increment the counter. We do it again. So a total of counter eventually gets up to 5. Will 5 be less than 5? No, it's not. That will kick us out. Now I want to point you out to here that the print prints and move the cursor one to the right. Okay, so right now at this moment of time, at this moment of time right here, the cursor is sitting right here. So we come out of our uh, column loop. We're going to reset our column counter back to zero. Now this line right here, we're going to do a print line because what does that do? The line puts a return in and it will drop the counter or drop the cursor right here to this spot. We increment our row counter. Our row counter now goes to 1. Is 1 less than 5? Yes. We come down to our while statement. Our column counter has been reset back to 0. Is 0 less than 5? Yes it is. We'll print another x. Increment the counter it's to 1. Boom. Print another x. Okay. Increment the counter. So it's now 2. Is 2 less than 5? Yes. Okay. And we'll keep doing this until we have our five x's. The cursor is now here. So is five less than five? No, it's not. That kicks us out of the loop. We reset our column counter back to zero. We do a print line to drop it. We increment our uh, row counter. And we do this for a total of five times because eventually this will get up to 5 and that will kick us out and then we're out of the loop. And that makes our grid for us. So, let me clean this up for you on there. What I want to point out to you, each level of the while statement represents a dimension. So if we were actually going to a third dimension, we'd have a while statement here. If you're going to the fourth dimension, we'd have a while statement here. Okay. What I want you to take away from this is this. The row counters, column counters, our counter variable actually represents a position in the grid. Okay. So if we actually run this, you can see it run. There it is here. Well, if I decide to make it 10 columns, you can see our grid became by 10 by 5. So that's how you use multi-level loops to traverse a grid in Java.